Hello everyone, today we am showing you a way of creating a polyline or curve in Grasso in Rhino and then using this curve in Grasshopper in order to create a parametric wall of a brick wall in this case that can be configured to your um, willing in any case. So as you see it would move and correct itself and you can manipulate it the way you want in order for it to fit your needs in whatever case. It's like very useful if you want to use um, certain things for robotics or if you want to make a facade out of bricks. And in the end this could like look something more or less um, like this um, if you're interested in that. So it's a very easy, very nice, straightforward script and I'm trying to get you along here. Um, also obviously you can like change um, the ratio, the distribution of how it is, as well as the row height and um, the general cube like um, length of it. As you see, some doesn't work if you put it too low, but um, they sit on top of each other in general. So I will like um, get you through this step by step. So um, I want to start by scratch, and um, what I'm basically when I'm showing you, I'm just drawing out the way how. I think in my mind of this, this how this thing works. So basically, we have a um, we have a curve, and that curve has several uh, points to it. And we move this curve upwards, and there it will be basically be simplified, and it will be just like a normal curve that like fits the start and end points. And the next thing we're going to do is basically we create um, in between curves that are basically slowly going stronger and stronger. And we're going to extend those curves. So they're going to be like a little bit bigger in the end, like this. And because they are bigger, because you want to fit um, more more um, points or bricks to it that will be aligned on top of those things. So let's take another one here. And this one will be like right above it. So they will be aligning. And they always have uh, a certain point that will be here and there will be a plane defined um, that will follow the shape of um, the curve itself. Um, yeah, so there are two things you need to do here in the beginning, obviously. So the first thing we're going to do is we create um, a curve, and we just like select the curve in Rhino in this case because it makes things very straightforward. And um, I'm going to hide this for better, better visibility. And we have a curve here in Rhino right now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move the curve into the Z direction. We're gonna use a unit uh, vector z, and we're gonna move it up. By the way, if you wanna know how I got those symbols, um, a very good way instead of having like the written things and to have it more like visually, um, you can go on display and then uh, draw icons, as you see. As well, what I also use is draw full names, so it makes more sense of what you need to put in each of those um, points, basically. So anyway, now we have our curve that is like and moved upwards, and now we need to rebuild this curve um, in order for it to be like basically simplified. Um, the thing we're gonna do is we also use the vector uh, number slider, and see we see how we have a simplified curve. The high, the less the degree count is, the more simplified our curve is. So um, yeah, we can just like, rename this here to maybe simplification process. Okay, and um, now we have our two curves. And the thing we're going to do is next we're going to create those like in between curves. There's a command called tween, which creates basically a curve between this one and this one. So we're going to move, uh, we're going to use our standard curve that we have and the rebuild curve. And as you see, we're going to move the preview here. As you see, we have our curve in between those two. But uh, the curve is like normally on a like one would be here and zero would be here, like depending on the artist. And we wanna basically create a range of 
um, curves that are here in the beginning and here in the end. So we're going to use the command range and the domain is between 0 and 1. In this case it's just 10 steps, so the steps would be between 0 and 1. Um, but we want, might want to create more steps, so we just create more of those things. Um, we, in this case we can stay the same with the domain. Let me just we can increase the domain as well, but that actually doesn't work here in this case, so we don't we can ignore it. Um, so nice. So now we have our um, tween curve set up. Now we need to do uh, basically the bricks uh, onto it. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna um, because we ha need to use every second curve because bricks have to lie um, basically on top of each other like this. So we always want this. Um, like gap in between, this is very important. So um, we're going to extend this curve simply, and uh, we're going to use a fixed amount. Um, in this case, we'll, we'll use it like a, like a line, and we're going to use a fixed amount um, of extending it. But we only want to use every second curve, so we need to dispatch in order for it to be selected every second curve in this case. So now we like lose hip every second curve here, and we're gonna use start in the end, and as you see, every second curve only is extended. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna divide uh, by the distance of the curve <laughs> in order for uh, um, the distance to be defined correctly, and we're gonna use, uh, and we no also need to put this curve back together, and this is gonna be done with the weave commands. So I'm gonna use this one. Here, so now they're defined back together, and we want to divide the distance between the curves. But we will see now there will be the same distance. So, in order for it to combat that, we're gonna just simply make a division and divide this by by two. And we're going to put the parameter of it in the start and the end of the curve. So basically, the curve is now half lengthened of the division. Of the curve itself. Um, so now we have our points set up. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an xy plane. So it's basically a, like own coordinate system that we're gonna use later for the rectangle um, that will be put uh, on top of the points. But now that we have the problem, as you see, they're all like uh, in the same direction. So we wanna orient or like align, align the planes correctly. This is our base plane, and we just use um, the tangents of the um, curve distance um, division. So I'm gonna make this invisible, so now it's already quite better. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a sub rectangle of the plane here, and we have to create the sizes of it as well. So in this case, let's try it with 11. Or actually, we can use the um, amount that we have here. Let's see if this is going to work out. No. We're going to use the amount that we have here in the beginning. As you see, um, it works in a way, but the problem is sometimes they are like overlapping. And if you want to see like really which curves are exactly overlapping, we can use the under intersect physical multiple curves. We can see where the points are that overlap of it. So um, a very good way of like knowing if the curves are overlap or not is basically if there are any points at all, basically. So we can simply combat that uh, in doing a subtraction of the um, initial um, value um, that will be subtract. Um, manually. Obviously there are ways of also doing it with a grasshopper script as well, but this would be like a rather simple solution that gets the job done quickly. Obviously we can make a way of defining the distance exactly between those two points with uh, for example sinus and cosinus and um, Pythagoras, but like in order to keep it simple we just use this. And it's a very nice way if we see for example that there are any values in this list as you, right now there are none, we are fine. But as long as it's gonna go low, you see the list will fill up and there are points that are gonna be in the case. So here we have our curve quite well. 
And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use um, the box rectangle tool, which can basically extrude the rectangle of it. And we're going to need the height. That's basically the height of the um, unit vector z um, divided by the um, steps amount. So, so in this case, 21 divided by 11, that's around like, um, yeah, like around 2, 1.9. Okay, put this here. And now we have very nice um, things that are setting on top of each other, basically. So now we have a curve, so that's pretty nice. And we can like play around with it a little bit and make a few variations. So we can maybe like, um, where do we have them? Like make a make the distance between each of those things a bit less, so the curve is like more filled, and then maybe make the top curve as well like a little bit wobbly more than we want. Then do we have like a straight curve? And we're gonna bake this one, and we maybe also use the group command to make it quick and easy to bake it. So now we just like move this little bit here. And um, well, maybe we need to select the curve actually in order for um, so we can continue working with that actually. So, yeah, there it is. And maybe we're gonna use one as well with a little bigger distance between the things, and but like more of the ones and be like more of a straight manner. Maybe we have enough, like a, another thing setting on top of it as well. So I'm um, going to bake this as well. going to select everything. But remember to deselect. Done this more better actually. Deselect this one. Put this one over here. And for the last one, just like maybe trace, try something more crazier. Like maybe we're well, not doing this, but like turning it around a little bit like here. And then do points on commands. And now we just, well, maybe not use it in the Z direction, but we can do it more like this. And maybe put this one more here. That one more over here. For more like a more extreme one. And yeah, gonna bake this one as well. Like move it a little bit over here. And maybe now I can also like show like a ground. And if we now use um, the V-Ray command in order for it to render it, it would have a very nice outcome um, of the of the result. So, well, very funny right now. My Rhino doesn't want to register my right click. Ah, here we go. Um, so yeah, now we have our like final brick walls and you can be very um, different with it and like try out new things, obviously try different um, ideas, different um, results that you want to might take. And uh, it's very useful for um, having a very interesting parametric brick wall that you want to use in a project and want to try it out maybe even like in real life as well. And um, yeah. It's a very nice way to to come up with a good idea of it. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, here we have another one. And right now you can just like it's very simply hit the render button, and you can have a very nice presentation for your project or a client or um, just for like own studies of how you wanna use um, this technology and it's very useful if you even want to like use it for robotics for example because you have actually the plane set up so it will second up with the other as well so it's very pretty useful so here's one very nice rendering done um, and even like in the detail you can make like a small almost like facade study in this case um, to use bricks not just like a certain flat way of using them but also maybe have some experimentation with it as well and um, use it to 
innovate and make more parametric models in a way that are definitely useful. So yeah, I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching. And if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments or um, I can make maybe help you with your own things as well. And yeah, enjoy your day and have a nice Christmas time right now. Yeah, it's around the corner. And yeah, have a happy new year and just waiting for the sun to finish and then we can go. So yeah, see you in the next one.